नमस्कार मैम नाउ वी कैन स्टार्ट फेज नंबर टू मैम yes sir thank you sir so in this uh, second step it is uh, the sample domain and the frame also so actually what matters is that you know when you are talking about the skill development uh, so in that in that step only what you have to decide that in which uh, context or in which sector do you intend to test also your items so the because accordingly you would develop the items also because the wording of the items should, should be such which should actually fit into that context also that matters a lot so now in this case because uh, we we intended to go for the banking sector only so in this case we contacted the the branch managers and the assistant branch managers of a private sector bank and which is a very well established and a very successful bank in particularly in jnk now it is ut so that is a jnk bank <clears throat> jnk bank it is a private bank only but a very successful bank so we just wanted to know that whether these uh, branch managers because even in any sector if you talk about so there are constraints which we face on day to day basis so our intention was to know that you know can are they able to identify the constraint that where the constraint lies and also at the same time we want to know that how do they go about resolving that constraint so for that you know we contacted 208 branch and assistant branch managers they were contacted and 173 completely filled in questionnaire so in this case also you know personally we contacted them personally we requested them to fill up the questionnaire and uh, to many branch managers assistant managers you know we took uh, the time from them and then only we approached them so that you know they can they can fill up the questionnaire in our presence then in case if in case if they find any problem while filling up the questionnaire so we can always assist them Uh, in completing that particular questionnaire so this is a sample domain and the frame when we talk about the scale refinement so after the scale development so what we did we went for the scale measurement now sir what is important in case of the scale measurement in case of scale measurement it is important that which scale or which measure are you using for each and every item so commonly used Uh, two measures are one is normally people they go scholars they go for the agreement scale or they go for the satisfaction scale but there are large number of other scales or also which are available and many a times uh, what we have also myself also i have personally observed based on the ampels and the phds scholars to whom i have supervised so what i have seen is they are in habit of using five point scale five point flicket scale so in that case it is uh, i mean you would find that the either they would go for 3 on a scale or few would go for 2 few would go for 4 so as a result you would find that the mean score would converge around 3 only it would be slightly above 3 or it would be slightly below 3 depending upon the level of satisfaction or the level of agreement now in this case my suggestion to the scholars is that what they can do is they should specify only the anchoring points anchoring points only if and it is better to use the seven point scale so that you are able to differentiate between the points between 4 to 5 5 to 6 6 to 7 right sir and in that case you know it is always better that when you are going for seven point scale you should only specify if suppose it is a satisfaction scale so you should specify that one stands for extremely dissatisfied and seven stands for extremely satisfied and then you simply write down 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 but the best way to capture the actually the true meaning of those items and to get the true responses also the best way is you provide one blank one cell only against each item let them write down that point there the scale point let them write on four let them write because in that case they would think even sir when when suppose that two three questions they are given to you one is a question which has five point scale where it is clearly mentioned they strongly agree agree neither agree nor disagree disagree and strongly disagree this is one set of question in the second set of question i suppose that it is again a, a five point scale but instead of writing strongly agree it is given 5 4 3 2 1 you would try to remain neutral 3 3 3 3 you would go for that third third situation is such where suppose that you know only the scale items are given that is the 7 and 
nothing is written in between and the fourth is is the one where only one cell is provided to you and you are asked to write on your own the scale point so which one would you find better better in the sense that for which you would require more serious exercise and for which you need to think twice or thrice before giving a score to it it is easier to put tick 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 against 3 or even on seven point scale against 4 you can easily provide tick is it clear so i think it is always better that you keep a blank cell against each item so that uh, the respondent can think about seriously about that item so that he can provide an accurate response and so uh, let me share with you these are the problems which we people are facing in india this is not the problem which is being faced by the scholars who are doing research in the developed nations because they provide very authentic and accurate responses so in that case even if you are using your know, seven point scale and you have specified the uh, the description to each uh, point to each scale point that doesn't matter sir but in our case what we need to think is we need to actually think seriously about it how to get the correct responses from the respondent so that is an issue for us it's a challenge for the indian researchers or particularly the social scientists you know so that is the problem so measurement is uh, actually uh, i mean it is not that because we are going for the scale refinement now but otherwise also when we are measuring the any we are measuring any construct so in that case also a very serious exercise is required and for scholar has to assure that he should he or she should not simply go and circulate the question it is always better that you know you fix an appointment with the respondent you sit with him and so that you know you would be confident about the the the, the quality of the data which you have collected so that is actually and that's why most of the cases you would find that the reliability and validity we fail to reach up to the even to that uh, threshold value also we are not able to get so so uh, shall i continue with now scale refinement yes ma'am sure okay so now scale re refinement actually it it has uh, various steps under it the very first step which we followed was now uh, when we said that you know that after pre testing two also we found that there are 46 items in our questionnaire so these 46 items they were under three uh, they were for the three dimensions mindset methodology and measurements so for under scale refinement the very first step which we followed was the construct some criterion one i'll show you one uh, the word file i'll share with you sir here because it has clearly specified the is it clear sir Yes, ma'am. It's visible. Okay, okay. So in this case, you can see that the very first step stage is refinement stage is the construct some criterion one, and what we did in this case, sir. So I'll take an example here that mindset. I took one item of the mindset, and I, I compared correlated that item with the total score of mindset. okay so correlating the items in the sub scale with its total sub scale so which means same for the methodology also so this was for each dimensions we did so mindset one item of mindset would be correlated with the sum total of the mindset similarly one item of the measurement all the items we did for for all the items one item for the measurement was compared was correlated with the total score obtained for measurement and for the methodology also particular item of methodology was compared with the total score of methodology this was the first step which we followed under the refinement scheme uh, ma'am is this uh, what is called as item to total correlation is it that uh, Uh, so in this case item to total total correlation we would be finding in the third step okay ha huh, this is the first step mm. what we are doing is we just want to know that whether the items belonging to that dimension whether there is a significant correlation among those items or not like my uh, mindfulness there are the three statement so first to take some of the three like that ma'am Uh, so if suppose mindfulness has suppose five items under it mm -hmm. so what we'll do is for each item 
for mm-hmm. each those five items we would compare the score of each item with the total score uh, with the total score of mindfulness okay total score of mindfulness so you have done it in sps probably or excel yes okay. yes yes sir for we okay. did uh, we used spss only for this. spss only okay sure yes sir and for uh, when we perform this step so we found that out of 46 nine items we had to remove why because because in this case if you look for the range of the description so i mean this was the range and the main thrust was in this case that if you would look into it that the no score or the no correlation should be below 0.50 no correlation coefficient should be below 0.50 so there there is in this case we we are trying to project that all the items they are significantly related to their own construct or sub construct or sub scale whatever you call it right sir right so and we found the alpha value also alpha value was greater than 0.80 in the second step so what we did the construct some criterion to correlating the items of the construct with the remaining constructs total score now because we had three dimensions here mindset measurement and methodology so we are talking about an overarching theory that is a the theory of constraint right. we are talking about developing a construct which is throughput orientation so now when we are talking about a particular construct a common understanding which we develop is that the dimensions should have good correlation because they belong to a one particular construct so the dimensions belonging to a particular construct those dimensions should be significantly related to each other so this we have proved with the help of the second step what we did item of one item of mindset was compared with the total score right. of the remaining right. remaining right. means measurement and methodology that okay. is with the not of uh, not for mindfulness it's only no, one statement no. of mindfulness with the total of mm and remaining. total of that yes methodology and measurement yes mm-hmm. sir so right. correlating items of one construct which is mindset here with the remaining constructs total score right because we want to know how much is the correlation okay of the items of mindset with the total the with the two remaining dimensions of the throughput orientation correct ma'am in this case no item was deleted because all the items the correlation coefficient was above 0.50 for all the items so no item was deleted so right. this is actually required sir why why i mean why these two steps are required the very first step we want to prove that the items belonging to one particular dimension they are significantly related to each other right in the second step we are proving though there are three dimensions but all the items belonging to these three dimensions they are significantly related to each other right sir right. the third step then we went for item to total correlation in this case we went for item to total correlation so where we looked into the the to what extent one particular item is related to all the total score of the mindset measurement and methodology and in this case three items they were deleted why because we had to delete the item whose item to total correlation was below 0.50 right so three items in this process three items they were removed we were left with 34 items and you can see that you know the uh, in this case the scores uh, they are above 0.50 and alpha values they are above point almost above 0.90 you can see then in the fourth step we looked for sir the mean and the variance now the criterion which we followed here is any item whose mean is below 4 and the standard deviation is below 0.90 so that was an item which was subject for deletion and we did not find any any value, any item uh, any item whose so mm-hmm. because now the point which i made in case of scale measurement Mm-hmm. was that you know most of the most of the people they would give the score if it was a 7 point scale sir which we used 
Right. And that's why this criterion of four, below four was, four was a midpoint there. Midpoint. So below four means, yes, sir. Because uh, there was no negative item in this case. So oh. we we had an, in our mind that it should be above four. And we wanted variance also. There should be variation. Not that everybody should give uh, four or five or six or seven. So we wanted that there should be divergence in the opinion and the scores given by the managers also. That's why this criterion of mean below four and variance below 0 0.90 we kept so that, and in this case, luckily no item fall under this range. So right. all the items they had mean score above four and this variance was also above 0.90. So ma'am, if uh, somebody is using five point scale, the corresponding value will become three. If three. somebody is using nine point scale, it will become five. The five. same value. Yes, value. yes, sir. Mean is here, yes, sir. For the mean means that, that is the midpoint only, midpoint five. of your scales. Got it, yes, ma'am. Got it. Sure. Next step, uh, we went for the inter item correlation, sir. Mm -hmm. So inter item correlation, all the items that uh, correlation matrix was prepared here. And mm -hmm. we looked again for the item whose uh, correlation coefficient is below 0.50. Right. So we did not find any item whose correlation coefficient was below 0 0.50. So finally, we retained 34 items. And then we went for the exploratory factor analysis, uh, EFP. Okay. And in this case, uh, these were the three parameters based on which we took the decision to remove the item. One was if the factor loading would be below 0 0.30. Mm -hmm. Second was if the commonality would be below 0 0.50 mm -hmm. and the eigenvalue would be below 1.0. So these were the three parameters based on which and but luckily no item was deleted because the for all, for each and every item factor loading was above 0 0.30, commonality, commonality was above 0 0.50 and eigenvalue was above one only. And right. that's why no item was deleted in this case. Right. So this is uh, for the exploratory picture analysis. I want to mm -hmm. switch. Was there, uh, one question, ma'am. Was there any case of cross-loading in EFA? Uh, yes, sir. In this case, actually, because, you know, normal questionnaire, yes, we, uh, I mean, many times we come across the, this problem, the issue of cross-loading. But because, you know, because we followed such a rigorous procedure, we did not find that any two items, even, you know, uh, when we go for the intercorrelation matrix also, we have observed that no two items, with regard to no two items, the correlation was above 0.90, sir. Wonderful. Mm, that's yeah. So that was also the thing, you know, you need to see that, you know, when you say cross-loading, which means that almost the, the it has been taken as a similar item by the respondent. Right. They could not differentiate between the two items. Right. So, so because of that, because of the exercise which we have followed, and then we have looked into this inter item, this intercorrelation matrix also, where we saw that you know we have observed that you know no two items, there was no correlation coefficient above 0 0.90. Sir. So, ma'am, in the third stage, scale refinement stage three, we can read it yes. as not below 0 0.5 and not more than 0 0.9 or 95. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was basically this was the criteria which we follow. Correct. Correct. Yes, sir. Correct. Yes, sir. So now, um, shall we talk about the scale validation, sir? Um, ma'am, the last step is left out. Scale validation. Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, the scale validation. Uh, so before going for the scale validation, uh, because now here we would be using the uh, MOS structure equation modeling. Also, we would be using. So okay. uh, I want to share with the scholars the a framework which is given by Shah and Goldstein. Sure, it's a wonderful sure. paper written by them. And because in this process, in this paper, actually we have followed those. So I want to share with the scholars that, you know, that you should also, at least you should look into the procedure which they have given to follow the structural modeling. Sir. Sure. So ma'am, uh, shall we consider that in the next video? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's stop it here, ma'am, and then we will continue yes. in the next one. Thank you.